This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and the real star today's show is the TGT steering wheel from Thrustmaster. Waited for a long time to get my hands on one of these. Finally did. Earlier today, you might have seen the unboxing. Earlier today, you might have seen our mounting, installation, updating the firmware and drivers, and giving it a first test on the PC. But now, I'm doing what this wheel was really built for, what this wheel was really intended for, and that is driving GT Sport. It comes branded, as you can see, with the GT logo right there. It is made with features that only GT Sport at this time are utilizing, like special vibration motors that make this wheel completely unique when comparing it to, say, the TSXW or the TSPC, which are also 40-watt brushless motor motors or wheelbases from Thrustmaster. So they are common in terms of the overall power, but this does have additional features that separates it from it. This wheel is $7.99. It is available now all over the world. And again, it is PC compatible. It is PS4 compatible. And then it is, what are we going to call it? GT Sport Enhanced, I guess we could say. There's a lever right here. We learned this on the PC side that we actually need to put it into the other position just to fire it up on the PC. And right now I have flipped that lever over to GT. And now just like I'm going to do with the PC, I want to plug it in and see what happens. I had to update my PS4, I had to update GT Sport. I've got that all squared away, but I have not even plugged the wheel in yet. Welcome to the stream, thank you for joining us, and I hope this is fun. I, you know, my, my big question is I put it in the description of the show. Is it better on the PS4 than on the PC? Can you imagine if a steering wheel actually operated better on a PS4 game than it did on the PC? That would be a first. And the other thing I think is, is it going to change Gran Turismo? I mean, all of the buildup about this wheel being so built for the game and vice versa, uh, will it pay off? Will there be something different? Will that vibration motor technology, whatever they've done, will it really enhance things? And if that's the case, then we're going to be begging and begging Thrustmaster to hurry up or other sims to hurry up and utilize those features. So, excuse me for a minute while I swing around and plug the wheel in. You can hear how excited Max is. He's already getting ready to get riled up. Now, I am doing... Let me let me get this plugged in and then I'll explain. Let's see what happens when we plug it in. Alright. So now, on the PS4, obviously all the settings we looked at in the settings screen don't apply now. We're on the PS4. We'll have our own settings within the game. I believe, I probably need to tell it that I'm using this wheel. So now I think that's all I had to do. Now I am doing this stream from the PC and I'm not using the PS4. And yeah, I like that sound too. I love that fire up the wheel sound and that's why I always make sure to show it for you guys. So now what I wanna do is actually just go in and see what's going on here as far as controllers go and here we go here's the tgt let's see what's going on so there's the button layout that you guys can't see so well uh that's a blue yeti microphone and i hope it's operating earlier today it sounded i heard a, a michael mention that we had a low rum uh or vibration sound almost and Civic, that's the big question. Will it eventually work like that or not? Um, I don't know. Um, oh, here. I wanted to try to find some controller settings. Uh, vibration on. All right, just want to see if there's any next level adjustments that we could do here before we got underway. And and today's audio, you know, again, so normally when I do a PS4 stream, I use the PS4 camera and I stream from that, which is very limited because it does its own picture in picture. Today I'm using the PC, which is allowing me to use two cameras so you can see from the top while I'm driving, see behind but it means that I cannot import the game directly in. But today the game isn't necessarily our priority. 
Um, so, let's play. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of excited. I have to admit, I mean, we can all talk about this wheel, 800 bucks. That's the most expensive wheel Thrustmaster's ever made by $200. It does come with the nicest pedals they've ever made. They're not really functionally different, but they are nicer pedals, a little more heavy duty. Uh... Is it going to be worth the money? I mean, that's a lot of money. A lot of people said that's really expensive. I, I don't disagree. Uh, normally, I defend price. Normally, I say, hey, you get what you pay for. But when I just drove the TSXW, which was a very good wheel for $600, for the difference for $200, I'm getting metal arms and metal faces. Well, different metal faces, metal arms on the pedals. It is a heavier unit. I'm getting those vibration motors. I'm getting a unique wheel rim with an amazing amount of buttons uh and i'm getting that vibration technology is that enough for a 200 dollar difference so i'm just going to go to mission challenges because that'll allow us to very quickly go through a bunch of different cars and scenarios and in my opinion still my favorite part of gt sport and that's the big question pesby and i'm not i'm not say that is the question i don't have an opinion just yet which way I would go um, and I often talk about the the Chevy versus Ford type of mentality and you know I think fanatic people will automatically say that absolutely Thrustmaster people who've always been happy with their wheels they're gonna think well this is the best wheel that they've ever made from the company that I love and trust so that is gonna affect things all right We'll have to double check our volume when I get the game going, see if it's unbearable or how. And I agree, Mark. I would have loved to have seen a load cell in this for that amount of money. And this still leaves me, A, using the conical mod, and B, uh, hoping for a, 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 a load cell mod that I can put onto this. I don't know what all the buttons do. We'll have to play around on that as well. Alright, am I feeling anything different? Now, all the driving I did on this in the in the previous amounts was with uh, the Fanatic CSL Elite. This view in this car is horrible. I don't even know where I am. I'm failing the mission horribly as I sit here feeling... You know, they had done a load cell mod years ago, and it didn't really work out, and they pulled the plug on it. I'll tell you something, the conical brake mod is in a really good spot for at least that car. It was right on that lockup point. Alright, I didn't talk much about what I was feeling. Um, very, very light steering. Very light steering. The braking point is just, like, dialed in for this game. I just felt it again. I'm getting a vibration on the road noise that I don't think I was getting with the CSL Elite. Just a little bit of sense of movement going on at all times. The force feedback is not strong right now. We'll have to look at our settings there. And I can see that I have traction control on as well. And the view in this car is killing me. I, the braking point again right now just feels ideal, even though I'm still doing terribly. How's the volume with the mix between the game and me trying to talk over it? I want to go to settings next time and see what we can adjust there. traction control see if it yeah I'm getting a lot of noise off the road I like that it's a little more lively that was weird 
You guys okay? My screen kind of went black over. That was weird. Oh, I slammed him. I did not feel that contact at all. Oh, not good enough. Uh, when was that up update? I did the update that gave us the compatibility to the PS4. If they've done another one since, I think they did one while I was out of town. And I have not tried it. I'm gonna exit so that I can adjust some things real quick. One of these buttons will change the cockpit view. I want to find that as well. All right, I wanted to go here first, and this is one of the things that just makes me so angry about this sim. I'd like to just make that a permanent setting for me, and it just doesn't seem that you can do that. Um, so yeah, let's try changing the view. Let's look, I'm gonna not worry about the challenge here for a second, actually. I'm actually gonna come to a stop. So what do our buttons? We got all these buttons. So this right here is changing front to rear brake balance. Don't know what the button does. This one doesn't seem to be doing anything. Yeah, that's kind of funny. You have this wheel. All right, now this is traction control. Oh, that's cool. Now, I can do this on the fly. That's really nice. So, we have brake balance here. Traction control here. Yeah, welcome to the show. This is also traction control. Interesting. Brake balance. Now, there might be other adjustments for other cars that aren't being turned on, but this car is pretty sophisticated. This joystick's working our look around button. That's cool. Look around, left, right, and up and down. Straight back is rear view. Not seeing anything out of this one. Um. Ah. If I press the yellow one, it's changing my menus. There's the course map. Yeah, blue is traction control. So is yellow, funny enough. A radar. What's the radar? Is that if I have a competition in my proximity? It's saying TCS for this. Traction control. This one, same thing. TCS, traction control. This one, brake balance. Sorry for the awkward moment, but I'm just trying to figure out what everything does here. <coughs> ah, see, that's what I thought. Yeah, I figured some cars are going to have some different settings, so... Let's try something real quick. Oh, I thought that would end the mission for me, but it did not. Um, that's not the button I wanted. Oh, whoa, 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 I did the wrong one. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to change. Oh, see, this is actually moving whatever one is on. So if I go to traction control, yellow will change traction control. If I go to brake balance, it'll change brake balance. Um, ah, there's our change view. But that's the only interior view, so I have to stick with it. That's all there is to it for me. And it's not the one I want. Hello. 
I'm looking at the radar trying to see anybody have oh it does show him that is ridiculous so is there a scale on the radar Sorry, just messing with the radar, just trying to see certain things. Danger, that's a very good question. I can adjust the interview. How? Sorry, I'm still just playing with buttons. You can see a little bit of kick there out of the wheel. I'm gonna kind of let go a little bit as I do some of this so you can see what it's doing in my hands. And where's the straight up pause button? I kept hitting this one and go to settings Thank you. I've never done this. Sorry to go quiet on you. Jamal, it's creating a low vibration. And like some road noise is the biggest difference I'm feeling in it right now. Much better view now. Surprisingly low floors feedback though. Considering $800, I think I would rather have seen more power out of the wheel than vibration motors. That's just an initial thought. We need to find our uh, force feedback settings and crank things up though. Feel it though, it's there, it's there. Yeah, it's like a transducer type feeling, a very low end vibration. I'm really sucking on this mission here. I want to do one more thing on the settings. I want to see about. Yeah, I think it's very turned down. Go to five. I'm going to leave the sensitivity one. Okay, now it's stronger for sure. I want to read your comment there. I would, yeah, we can go up. Oh, but now it's strong. So I have to eat those first words, uh, the words about the strength. We're now playing with fire. Six. Whoa, downshifting too early. Wrongs again. All right, let's try out six. Yeah, no, we all do. That's why I love doing these live shows. <laughs> I agree with that, Jerry. 
I completely agree with that. We can move on. Um, so we're going to go to six. Anyone have a recommended sensitivity setting? Sensitivity at seven, says Civic. I'm going to take both your recommendations simultaneously. We can always keep making changes. It's hard for me to say I've done a wheel change, Scott. I'm on a wheel I've never used for this before. All right, we'll give this one more shot, and then I want to get out of this car because I don't like this. Sensitivity one. All right, well, we'll see how this feels and what I feel. He got by. I really blew that. Alright, let's change cars. It's hard for me to know what this car should feel like. So we'll just... We'll come back. I don't like bronzes. Okay. Well, we're going to pick a new event. Um, yeah, let me check what my rotation is. Oh, so now we're going to go to a rally car. Like, I have any more feeling for this one either. So now what'll make me mad is if it remembers my cockpit settings, but it won't remember, like, traction control. Uh, that would be pretty funny. Wireless sensitivity. That's just force feedback sensitivity. Uh, here, let's just uh, adjust the resistance of the steering wheel when you start to turn it. The resistance is an example of force feedback. The greater this value, the more responsive to changes the wheel would become, the lower, less responsive. We will have to cut. I love the way they scroll that at a thousand miles an hour. I assumed it would, Jerry. This game's terrible about that. I don't mind it in most of the cars, and I like the cockpit view. Oh, I don't know this track, and now we're at night. This is not cool. I have no idea how fast I can go here. It's all right. You're getting a lot of, uh, you can really feel when you get it crossed up, the wheel just kind of goes really loose. Like you can just tell you're really sliding. Initial thoughts kind of stuff. Oh, come on, get by him. Oh no, into the wall. Lots of bumpiness, I'm feeling that. Lots of vibration, but not to the point of annoyance at all. Don't get me wrong about that. Woo! With the jump, felt that in the wheel. Getting a good trans. You can see right there how much I'm just going kind of loose, letting you see how it's controlling my hands a little bit. Oh, no, no, no. Get 
some body lean into it. I like the way everything sounds kind of echoey in Gran Turismo. Yeah, it's definitely a m much more active wheel in the dirt on the bumpy terrain. Still not feeling much of the car contact right there. I mean, fortunately, I don't know exactly how much car contact I should feel. Unless it changes the angle, but I think once it changes the angle of the car, just like sliding, you would, but maybe you wouldn't necessarily feel the impact like you think, or I think. Oh, I'm in third, I'm in trouble. Done very little of the rally carring so far. Second? Alright, not bad. Now, why doesn't it do that with the ABS? Uh, no, Scott, I haven't played in, in since we did those shows, really. Um, whoops, I didn't want to do that again. Um, was that in the Corvette, El Bucho? I'm a wheel man, what can I say? Now, you guys have beat me up pretty good on a lot of those challenges. I, I see your names all up there. All you guys. They scanned Willow Springs, I believe, but never built it. That would be an interesting thing to know, the list of tracks. And they did announce a lot of them way back when, I think, in some promotional stuff. But what tracks have they scanned but never got around to building for various whatever reasons? about Gran Turismo though, or GT Sport if you want to call it. The graphics are awesome. The overall feeling is really good. People want to argue physics about this game. I think they're very good gamey physics. I don't even want to hear about how it's as good as some of the PCs I like. I mean, if you love these the best, that's great for you. Personally, they just don't feel as layered and detailed. As much as an R Factor or Seto Corsa. I'm not trying to turn this into a GT Sport review. That's not even it. But everything about the way the car drives is correct. And that's what, you know, the first step of physics is giving you that feeling that you're really driving a car, not playing a game. It's natural. With this wheel, I can tell you, 
anybody who respects the game is going to get in and get that feeling of driving a car right off the bat. Oh, I'm not going to get him, I don't think. Oh, not if I do that. I thought that... Rally, that was tough. I think I could have got him if I just not made a couple of small mistakes. I would have liked to have not seen dirt in this game. I'm going to do a, a, my real thoughts on Gran Turismo. I'm preparing a GT Sport, a live review, we're going to call it. And we'll see how that goes out. I'm only 13th there. Red Cypher, I believe you're one of our regulars. Uh, up there in second. Let's pick another event real quick. And no, I'm not all gold. I, I try to be, but at some point uh, we were doing, if I couldn't get it done in three tries, we moved on. El Bucho, that's a great question. Um, why did they not finish Long Beach? And it's such an iconic, iconic track. It's such an important track. They try to have their IndyCar type thing you think of the nascar series and they managed to get every track and sure some of them have changed and they're a little dated on some changes to the tracks and paving and things but long beach still sits there just in that temporary form and me too and it's such a great layout as far as drivability <clears throat> All right, so what do we got here? We're in the Lamborghini, no, the, yeah, the Venano, Venano, Venino. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, they really don't have the Indy cars that they need. Cool, thank you, Red Cypher. Oh, this is the one we did that outright speed drive with, too. The Bugatti. Uh-oh, that's the wall. <laughs> oh, and the Gran Turismo line. Talk, you know, when you want to... People want to call this a full sim. and Oh, what about that? That should have been the end of my race, the end of my game. Instead, it slowed me down to the speed I needed. So now that we're back on the road in this car, stiff car, there's that hum of that vibration motor. It's not doing a lot. Hitting another wall. This is sloppy. I could be concentrating a little more. I'm thinking about the wheel, talking to you guys, trying to tell you what's going on. Oh. Hey. That was very rude. The AI actually did something. When I'm perfectly straight, oh no, 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 no. When I'm perfectly straight on the wheel, it's very quiet. When I put just a little bit of steering input is when that vibration kicks in. So I'm wondering if that's the intention of giving you a sensation of uh, friction from the tires, or is it, um, flex of the tires, perhaps? I don't think they're quite that detailed.
Yeah, I understand the interior of that track came out very, very jumbled and hard to do. And this is something, you know, this isn't for this show. Well, you know what? You guys are the pit crew. We can talk about anything we want on any show. Um, with iRacing going to Rallycross, so at SEMA, I'm there. I'm watching the global rally cross cars being driven all day long, and I'm thinking, they didn't laser scan those tracks. I mean, there's, <laughs> give me a break. Uh, I mean, maybe they did. Maybe I'm wrong here, but I'm assuming they did not. So iRacing finally did something that they've never done, which is do something that was just made up, essentially. And I'm sure the layouts are correct, uh, but... Breaking the mold on that could be very important because that could be the key to something like Long Beach. It's like, I, at this point, don't care if all the buildings are perfect. How about just get me three or four of the iconic ones that you see on TV? Three or four of the iconic ones that maybe the drivers know because it's important to the driving line. Throw in some fakies here and there just to block the view so it won't be a performance issue. Um, they have a lot of tracks that have buildings and interior pieces and tons of trees and objects so where there's a will there is a way and you know i love i racing but at the same time i i would love to see long beach done more completed so that it would be more accepted they don't use it in any of the series because of it and you know it'd be interesting <laughs> what makes you think dave kemmer is ever gonna leave it's his baby all right, let's try that again. Rant over. I need to look at the map again. This is not a track I know like the back of my hand. So as I was saying also, so right there I feel that vibration. Right there it's pretty quiet. Vibration, quiet. Mercedes. I'm trying to go here. Oh, look at you. Look at you, Mercedes. That was a pathetic another wall ride corner by me. Admittedly. The conical brake mod, as I said, default screwed in all the way position seems to be ideal. I am just totally right at the point that I feel that secondary resistance is where I should be not pressing much harder. Without getting lock up. Oh. That means I still can press into it and lock them up. That's on me, not on that. You can try. I racing listens, but that's one that they still just haven't done. love to have a drag racing game. I don't know if it needs to be that. I don't know. I Years ago, gosh, this goes back so far. Bethesda, I believe, is the company that made it. They made a hot rod drag racing, I think they called it back then. And it was definitely an attempt at, at doing... Uh, I can't believe that got me a gold. It was an attempt at at doing exactly that, a drag racing sim. And you modified your car, did things, had to keep it within certain limits to make your class. Never played John Force Racing. Awesome, Frank. Glad you're here. Glad the pit crew and I can be of any assistance. Ooh, I'm all the way down in 14th. That's almost deserving of a redo. But we got the gold. Let's move on. 
I really want to try a different variety of cars. I mean, again, when I drove the rally car, it was very jumpy, very bouncy. Uh, I couldn't notice the vibration motor as much because it was always on. In the Lamborghini, the vibration motor, again, when I was going straight, it was a very quiet. Right about there, you get a little kind of a feel, just a slight feel. <laughs> there you go. There's my built-in VR. I'm really debating VR for the show, and as much as it's awesome, I don't know if it's the way to... to I don't know how it worked for you guys. When I watch VR at trade shows, for example, you know, we were using the VR with iRacing and the global rally cars. Um, you know, as the viewer, that view is not wonderful. Try the Nurburg. I'm going to do that when I switch back to the PC. Originally, I was going to do PC testing and then this. And then I did a little bit of testing uh, during the assembly video or the installation. Smooth, that's coming. I promise, it is coming. I am working on that uh, still. I'm just trying to do it right in the way that allows us all to, to contribute to the show in various different ways. It's coming. I'm working on it very hard. Um, I've been out of town a lot. That's not speeding things up. Streets of Willow. I have driven this track in a go-kart. That will not give me any advantage. It was years ago, so I remember. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think it'd be any fun to have that. All right, we're going opposite the direction I've raced this track in. So that'll do me no good. That is a funky sounding Mustang. Is that a viper? Go, 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 Mustang. Not gonna get him. How many laps? Oh, we have two laps? Oh, piece of cake. track though jeez louise that's not how you're gonna get him this isn't a mustang the rear end steps out like a mustang Oh, no, 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 no cheating. That was such cheating. Silver. No, 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 no. Damn it. Loving the wheel. Uh, loving the wheel. In our original uh, first test, remember we were talking about that notchiness. It's still there, hidden inside. 
I only am bringing it up because it's something we talked about. I have not felt this uh, during driving at all. So that's nice. Might be something that the vibration mo motor is help covering as well. And that could be a big advantage of running this on this game in particular. That vibration motor comes on and kind of hides that semi-cogginess that's in there. I'll have to try that, Jerry. I don't know if better is the word. It's a really good wheel for this game, I can tell you that. <laughs> I mean, wow, I'm this is quite the equipment for running a Gran Turismo level game. Um, not calling it better or different, but you know, who would imagine that this is the way I'd be playing on a PS4? It's an incredible wheel, I, I can tell you that. Better? I don't know. There's very, the, everything's very rigid on this wheel, by the way. I don't feel any flex going on while I'm driving. I'm sure there is flex. You guys can see it better than me. I'm paying attention to driving, sorta. to see that better damage modeling I really would you know when you consider the light content but they're like oh yeah but we're trying to be really like more sim well more sim comes with doing things like better damage modeling more consequences of actions like hitting the wall or running into your competitors you know this should be hurting my car, ultimately. And I know in single-player arcade mode you can do that. But here in career mode, it is completely disabled. I'm not paying attention. I'm just talking and slamming him. Adios, muchachos. Whoa! <laughs> I missed that turn. Oh, I gave up the gold so much for adios, muchachos. Hey! No, 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 no! Son of a... What a choke artist. more shot. So in the Mustang, now we're in a completely different type of car. Um, Frito, I gotta tell you, the GRC is a lot of fun. <laughs> I've driven it a bit, and, and this week at SEMO, I had access to driving it as much as I wanted for the most part. And it is fun. Did some races with uh, Otto and Kevin, uh, the guys from CXE. You know, I only brought my equipment to do a live stream, and my connection was so horrible that I couldn't do it. But I didn't bring any cameras to film it, or I would add cool footage of us all racing and driving it. But I'm going to be doing some stuff with GRC coming up. Don't you worry. I'm really looking forward to it as well. Alright, last try on this one, and then we'll move on. I want to try a different car. I'd like to try an all-wheel drive. I, that Lamborghini was probably all-wheel drive. I didn't look. We didn't see if we could change uh, things with our buttons.
I don't like that you can just lean against them and it just sort of works out. Pikes Peak race, so I remember those days. Oh, no, no, don't walk up the brakes. Oh, he pitmaned me. You see that? I probably ran across his bow. <laughs> oh, we're no longer. Oh, this is devastating. We might as well end. Viper. We're just going to have to bomb it through here and cross our fingers. <laughs> oh, you cheating fool, Cole. Who asked me about cheating earlier today? <laughs> oh. I, I, I have to tell you that I love that, this aspect of Gran Turismo. I am baited by gold medals and getting a bronze and silver makes me mad and makes me want to go further in. Um, and I'm just reading your guys' comments. I'm sorry. I did do a thing on what the comparable fanatic package would be. Um, or combinations that you could get for $800. Uh, just to be doing comparisons. And what I'm going to do, just so you know how things are shaping up, I'm ultimately planning on doing a review of this wheel, just to be fair, and then moving into doing some really direct one-to-one -one comparisons. And some of it will be just feeling on aesthetics. Some of it will be feeling of it while driving. Some of it will be scientific. And some of it will be just straight-up lap times. Um, uh, no, it's not even that. It's just, that's my thing. I don't know, Dwarvish. I'm not sure what it would be, why I do that. Um, all right, new event. I didn't do very well, but being that I came from so far behind. And again, when I talk about baiting me, um, I like this stuff. Except with a limited amount of cars in Gran Turismo... It's not going to take a whole lot of winning to have almost all the cars in game. Look at that. Gotta love the modeling of this game. Graphically, it is as good as it gets. Perhaps even in some ways the best. I think Project Cars might be the overall best graphics. And we're going to do that Sim Pit, Sim Pit, Pizza Pole uh, coming up where we're going to talk about what the best of the best is and everything. I haven't used any of my mileage points, actually. All right. I don't like seeing those two bronzes and silver, but let's just kind of move on. Oh, great. Oval? Is this an oval? Yeah, I'm very eager to see the Fnatic DD wheel as well and what the price will actually be. All right. Um, which one? Let's do the focus. Oh, I don't need 
that it was just doing the regular loading. And Civic, that's what it really comes down to for me. Um, we can talk about price. We can talk about the way they look. We can talk about different wheel rims. We can talk about red, you know, vents like in the XW, windows like on the Fanatic. We can talk about specs even, like which is faster, quicker, blah, blah, blah. But the proof is in the pudding. And I will say this, the the lap time challenge is going to be interesting, but at the same time, it's still specific to every person. Um, wheels are a personal choice. Civic, I have not noticed any difference in that respect. Um, I did not drive a different wheel before this, and I've been on a direct drive for the last eight days at that trade show. Alright, we can knock it down one. Uh, the strength is actually... I'm quite happy with the strength right now. Um, oh, I have my traction control on again, wouldn't you know it. I need to get used to turning the dial on that now that I can. Whoop. I hate when I do that. Oh, I want to turn off traction control. Oh, no, I want to get used to changing it in the game. So if I uh, change in the game, it certainly isn't going to remember it, right? Whoop. That's the one. All right. All right now I'm far behind. Oh, too much. That was bad. Oh, I didn't go when I went. All right, let's do that again. All the champions are on G27s, it seems. Ah, too much gas. Thought I had it. Not a big fan of the e-brake action, but you're just using a button for e-brake. That's not how e-brake is done. Silver. We'll redo that one more time. if I agree with that about lap times in the DD wheels, by the way. I don't know if it actually translates to being faster. Um, you might have more enjoyment. You might have more consistency in some ways, but I don't actually see how they'd be faster. And if you really think about it, most of the aliens, most of the champions right now, they are doing it on G27 still. Um... When I was doing this trade show and I was telling people about things, I was telling them how I felt that the brake pedal was actually the most important. Look at that, we're number three on that one, guys. Pick a new event. Getting a good variety of cars. I'm, this is the other thing. We talk about, I'm letting the cat out of the bag a little of my feelings about Gran Turismo Sport for the review that's coming up. And I have written the whole thing, by the way. Um... Again, limited content with this mentality that we're going to be more racy than we've ever been before. And I love the daily challenges. I love the 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 fact that you have racing that you join, you practice, you practice, you qualify, you run your race. In the mentality, it does raise the level of competition, and that is more racy. But I didn't need rally cars. I didn't need all these GT Vision cars. I needed old tracks that I've always loved out of Gran Turismo, and why don't I still have them? If it's going to be a really... I'm giving you... This year, and this will be duplicate to some of the review, and this is really about the GT wheel, but, you know, I, I want 
real more real racetracks. Me too, Smoove, and that's exactly why I loved. I mean, I did it just to test the live stream because people are doing a lot of driving videos. I thought, oh, I could do that too. But for me, it immediately became, no, this is a better way to do a community channel where we can really talk. I mean, I value your guys' questions. I value your opinions. I value your guys' suggestions for settings and input. And as much as I love to try and do everything in sim racing, there are experts for every product that know far more than I do. I'm not trying to say I know about Gran Turismo Sport more than some of you out there even. And when I get to try it out, I have to review it for the world and compare it to iRacing and Assetto and all the other sims that I get to play. Uh, but getting a little insight from the experts helps me a lot in doing what I'm doing now. And that's why I like to show you the moments. I mean, I do a review. I don't just get in and review. This isn't my review. This is me showing you the variety of testing I'm going to do, the willingness to try different settings to get it dialed in, the changing from Gran Turismo to maybe we should fire up some F1 2017 and take it out of GT mode, a lot of things like that, and getting you guys to really see the amount of time, effort, and, and how seriously I do take the testing of things. It's not just get in and drive and have fun all the time. Right now, that we're kind of switching to just driving... Excuse me, and having fun. Whoa. Notice that a lot of these uh, LMP style cars, the seat is just unbearable. The other thing I'm not a big fan of and why I don't like the futuristic cars is how am I to know how that thing's supposed to really handle? difference in the wheel between cars and I believe some of that is on purpose so again like this car probably has whoa more power steering than others so I'm getting lighter force feedback than what we are feeling in like that Mustang tracks. That's the other problem for me when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Grand Turismo. If they're not real tracks, it's really hard for me to know the layout. <laughs> Up and closer. Yeah, I forgot to change the height. <laughs> now, why isn't that one of the ones that I can just the buttons. Wouldn't that be cool? Why can't this be that? Why can't this be change the view? Traction control. Just trying to see if we have any other settings being that we're in this strange car. Brake balance. Traction control. What about ABS? There's no way to turn ABS on and off from the cockpit either, huh? That's going to be those. Yeah, you know what? Uh, a release price is always full fare. Um, that's pretty normal. Um, like right here. Is that what you mean, Theodore? Or you mean with one of my buttons? I thought I did have a button that changed it.
Ah, oh, terrible line. Terrible line. What do you say does it feel crisper? Whoa, shoot. In a way, it does. And the way it does is not in the speed that it responds. It's not that. That flex is just not noticeable when driving. That would be, but that's not a direction I pull so much. So when I'm driving, I'm not wasting any energy between here and here at all. On the CSL Elite, as much as I love that wheel, there is a bit more wheel flex, and when you're... It, it is a damper of sorts, slowing down the input from this movement to where it's registered here. I mean, it's ever so slight, but you use the word crisp, and that's exactly the word that I would describe the difference between the two. <clears throat> now, if you're very smooth on the wheel and you don't do any flexing, you're not going to notice that, and I wouldn't make that statement. But for someone like me who leans so much or puts so much grip pressure on the wheel, it does um, seem a little bit more in that direction. When we get to our actual shootout, we'll go into things like the actual refresh rates and the actual speed of the wheels uh, acknowledging the game, things like that. That'll be something we cover as well. And not that I think that's everything in, in analyzing a wheel, because I again think it nothing as important as results. And the results will always vary based on how you drive. Whoa. What you drive and how you know what you expect out of it. So uh, even if I try to tell you this is the results I get, don't tell me I'm right and that anybody else is wrong if they get results with a different wheel. You know, Mitchie Hoyer wins races on a G25 that sounds like it's going to break at any second. Um, and that's it's not unique to him. Uh, that's a common story in sim racing. Whoa. That the best of the best. Oh, I did it again. Come on, Cole. Yeah, Apex. That's exactly what I'm. I'm talking about doing. Um, and I've got some software that'll allow me to do that. Um, no, no weather. No weather in GT Sport. Jerry, when it comes to uh, not only rubber banding, but one thing I found annoying when I was doing some other types of racing was how the AI really very, very barely race. They barely race each other. They barely race you. And at any moment, all you have to do is rear end someone and ride their bumper, and they'll literally get out of your way. They are functional AI. I mean, out, they're out there. They're driving well. They're there. I can, if I respect them and never bump them, you create a good race with the AI. But if you want to, I mean, I can use him as a moving guardrail around the corner. You know, thank you, Mercedes, for keeping me in the corner there. Let me just use the Audi to slow down a little bit. So I have found the AI to be a little bit annoying in that respect. I'm kind of turning this into a uh, Gran Turismo slash TGT slash almost uh, borderline fanatic review at times. Out of my way, out of my way, come on. At least we got a medal, now we can move on. And I wonder how much the uh, AI's driving affects, like if you notice the difference in some challenges being so easy and some being so difficult. And I wonder if that's based on the AI driving line as well. 
uh, smooth. Sean, as our change, one sim racing game will have all the pieces of our... No, I don't think we're ever going to see that, unfortunately. I mean, that pizza, which we're going to... I'm working on that right now, too. Um, but, no, because I don't think we have the horsepower to do it. It does look like a bar of soap. Um, I agree with the chat aspect. That, and that's stuff they did 10 years ago. So, I don't want to hear about not being able to. Um, the transducer works even better. So, you think this game, this uh, uh, dilutes some of it with the hollowness of the shell of the rim? Perhaps. Uh, one other thing I can try is, is putting on my uh, TSXW, the Sparco rim. Uh, maybe I'll do that for the PC racing. But I like these dials. I prefer the Alcantara or the leather suede to the the, the hard leather. This will last longer and look nicer longer. But um, I prefer the actual feel of the XW rim. Um, okay, we'll do... Oh, wait. I wanted to switch... Oh, never mind. Here we go. Horse Thief Mile. Yeah, and that's the other thing about a CSL Elite. Uh, going away from the PS4 rim that I have and going back to like my 918 rim or my uh, Formula rim and that would allow it to be the true quick release. Yep, they're rally-inspired version of the Sparco wheel. <laughs> as much as I know Willow, I've never been to this one. I know the big track. I know the goat cart track. I know Streets of Willow the other direction never run this. Willow is one of my local tracks. It's outside of LA, about 90 miles north of Los Angeles. It is where I did a good amount of my go-karting days. Oh, slam. We're not meddling this one. Well, the way we're doing it right now. This is a fun track though, very loopy. It's kind of a roller coaster ride. I touched the dirt there and I immediately felt that in the wheel. I felt the pulling of the dirt. Hey, what happened? <laughs> I didn't do that. That was funny. It was like a joker lap, right? I did that on purpose. <laughs> Not the initial off, just hitting that bump once I was there. If you don't turn hard right, you'll go into the pits on this track. Yeah, wheel is working really nice. Really nice. I'm happy with it. That was interesting seeing that. I haven't seen that out of the wheel yet. So I felt that last jump and bump there. Definitely getting that light again. Look at when you can, you can see it moving. I'm holding the wheel as light as I can. 
I was just kind of flicking the gas to get the rear end to move. Oh, where are we going? Alright, let's restart. Uh, this, this should be all-wheel drive, this car. Sparco wheel rim tomorrow. I would have to go digging very deep to get it. So I wouldn't be able to do it quick enough. It would be uh, tough to do during this stream, but when I do my PC testing, which I'll probably do tomorrow, <clears throat> I'll do exactly that. start that one anyway so I'll catch up with you guys uh, $800 Tony Cart 800 is what they're charging the base is very similar but you now have pedal metal arms and upgraded uh, metal faces so it is a little bit better still on a conical brake mod with a potentiometer on the brake You've got a vibration motor on the back, which is right now only working in GT Sport. Adding some road vibration seems to be its number one uh, plus. Not overly significant. I mean, I'm, it's not an overwhelming amount of vibration that I feel going on. Um, you get the unique wheel rim branded G GT. Somebody called it a downgrade. I don't know if I'd be that mean to it, but I, I prefer the Sparco. Uh, rim to it. The Sparco became my new favorite Thrustmaster with the Ferrari uh, 488 wheel, I believe it was, was my previous favorite. <coughs> Michael, they're really the same family, so it's a better choice because it's less expensive, it doesn't come with pedals, and that allows you to spend some money on an upgraded pedal set. So if I were going to build the ultimate Thrustmaster package, because they're still not using a load cell, I would probably recommend a TSPC and maybe going to a third-party pedal set. Um, you know, you can get the T3PA Pro and add those on and, you know, keep your budget low. So it's, it's on a budget, but I really do prefer a load cell or hydraulic. Um, my downside for me on the TSPC is I wasn't a huge fan of that wheel rim. So the next thing I was going to say is, if you're already in the Thrustmaster family, it's a no-brainer. You know, to be perfectly reasonable and honest, when people hear about this wheel coming out, well, it is the flagship model. If you spent a lot of money on a, on a Thrustmaster shifter and maybe upgrading the pedals or maybe you have multiple wheel rims, you're probably not dying to change families. So... As so many people want to make that Thrustmaster versus Fanatic battle, and I'll certainly play out the battle or take bets on the battle, but it's not... I wouldn't just say, oh, well, throw all your stuff away and, and change families. If you have... You know, I want to try my other wheel rims on this just to see how it feels if it's any different. Um, 
Heath, not not terribly, but I've heard with one of the patches, wasn't there an issue with some of that as well? Um, yes, I do. I only have the TH8RS shifter, funny enough. That's the one that is PC only. <coughs> oh, Bucho, I agree. It is not cheap. Uh, on its low end, it's easy to get into hobby. Uh... You know, uh, games are very inexpensive, and, and a TMX wheel at 150 is certainly a great option to get you going, and you're going. Uh, it's only if you want to start taking it seriously that you start feeling the need to get into more refined equipment like this one. Give me one moment, you guys. I gotta get a drink. Whoops. I don't know what I just broke. <coughs> Ah, uh, does it? Okay, cool. Um, and to be honest with you, okay, we want to talk shifters. Um, if there's ever a time I'm not running to a shifter, it's to play GT Sport. We can argue all day. This is one of those topics that people want to argue also about, and I'm going to make my policy known once again just to make it really clear. If you would like to use a shifter while racing, go for it. Have fun. Knock yourself out. If you think it makes it more autistic, more, uh, authentic, more realistic, go for it. Knock yourself out. Have fun. If you want to race for lap times, uh, there are very few scenarios where I think the H pattern makes you faster. There are a few. Don't get me wrong. There are a few cars and a few moments in sim racing where it's actually faster. But it is more difficult, without doubt. And I'm not saying that so much in the grand scheme of cheating, but... If I knew for a fact that everybody I was racing against was using no clutch aids and a stick shift, then I would absolutely love to join that league where we can absolutely know that everybody's doing playing on the same using the same playing field. But I'm not going to be the only guy H pattering, blowing up gearboxes, blowing up bad shifts because I downshifted and jumped jumped the gear, couldn't heel toe adequately. Why am I going to put myself through extra challenges when I'm going to race Martin Kroenke or Mitchie Hoyer or these guys? They're not using it. So why am I going to do that to myself? Now, if you're a sim driver and you're driving for the experience, that's a little bit different. In a Gran Turismo, you can make that argument because I still feel the single-player career mode is more fun than the multiplayer racing. They wouldn't like to hear me say that, but that's how I feel. And if that's the case, then it's really just me against the clock. But here we are in a game with leaderboards. You guys are seeing your names on coming up and beating me and losing to me. Um, there is pride at stake. And so I don't need to use a shifter. And uh, that's that's my take on that. Um, Jean Baptiste, tell me your mentality. I'm all for it. I'd love to hear your argument. Please, tell me. I gave you my whole argument. You said... You're questioning it, so tell me your opinion, not just question mine. I gave you my reasoning. I gave you my thinking. So if you want to come at me with that, which I love, that's why we're doing this live. That's why we do it where you can have an opinion. But don't just question mine. Tell me yours. Tell me why you think I'm right or wrong about my opinion that I completely spelled out. So I'm not trying to point you out or give you a hard time, but you said F word here in my chat. So... Have at it. Tell me. You said drive it like it should. I. That's your opinion. So are you racing against Mitchie Hoyer? Are you racing against Martin Kroenke? Uh, Michael Conti? Are you racing against the best of the best in a stick shift? Or are you just racing against anybody and it doesn't matter? Are you racing in scenarios where pride is at, pride is at stake? Or are you just a sim racer? I keep saying racing. Not everybody here is a racer. A lot of us are just sim drivers also. So answer answer that. I mean, this is a great discussion. Um, it's a driving sim. Looks like the game has shown how good you really aren't. I'm not sure what you mean by that, home dad. Please elaborate on that as well. Uh... 
Civic Center, great. Um, Civic says... He loves the Lotus 49 and always practices with the H shifter, but when he races, it's paddles. And I, I totally agree uh, with that kind of thinking. Again, there's that moment. Are you just looking for the fun? Are you looking for the realism? Are you looking for the experience? Or are you looking to race? Um, I'll tell you what, going back to my coding, karting days, outside of cheating, um, I... <laughs> I would want and I would pay for anything I could get on my cart that would make it faster, not slower. So paying money for an H pattern to go slower if I'm racing against guys not doing it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm not against them. Don't get me wrong. I, If you've watched this show, you've seen me run H pattern on a million times. You've seen me blow up gearboxes. You've seen me do well with the H pattern. I do know what I'm doing. I can heel toe. I can do it. And you've also seen me struggle with it. I've been very honest about all of this with you guys. And, you know, that's the great thing I love about this live show, again, is being able to be that honest about everything about it. And here we are trying out this wheel. And today, I wouldn't have used the H pattern today anyway, by the way, even if I wanted to, because I want to test the paddle shifters. I want to test the wheel the way it comes out of the box. But I do like the conversation. Um, Jake, you've missed an hour and a half of driving. I'm actually bringing it to a close at this point, so you're going to have to hit replay on this video. <laughs> uh, home dad, well done. Well played, then. You accomplished your goal. <laughs> um, smooth, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the reasons that things have changed in tires as well. Um... And Michael, every time I've, I've tested, I am faster in paddles. End of story. Uh, not end of story. In the Mazda MX-5 and I racing, I was faster with the H pattern for sure. Um, but I was more likely to make a mistake as well. You know, the other thing about H pattern, I mean, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure this one out. If that was the way to race, Tipco just chimed in with it then all modern Lamborghinis and Ferraris would have H patterns. But the reality is every supercar on earth has gone to paddle shifters. And it's not because it's cool or it's a fad. It's because it is faster. Jake, I will do that. We've talked about it live the whole time. Let me just kind of tell you uh, my thoughts. Thank you very much, Heath. I appreciate that. And, and, and Theodore, there are moments where a shifter gives you an advantage that you can't do with paddles. Like, I mean, if you sometimes want to do like a 4-2 to two downshift instead of 4-3-2, um, then I totally, you know, there's an advantage to doing that. Jean-Baptiste, you're, you're right. I'm not, I'm not even saying that you're right or wrong. Um, you never answer my question about who you race and how seriously you take your lap times. And does it affect you? Or are you just about being authentic? And there's no right or wrong, by the way. I could care less. It doesn't matter. We're just talking about you and your opinion and why you feel that way. And, and I'm sure many people would agree with you on that. And and I've told you my opinion. I'm sure pe plenty of people agree. That's, that's, again, the beauty of... Even when we talk about wheels, like, do I prefer this to a CSL? Well, when I do tell you that opinion, which will come out... Um, that's my opinion. It's just me. I'm one guy. Um, no, no, I understood that, John. I understood that. Okay, so final thoughts on the wheel. This isn't final thoughts. This is initial thoughts on the wheel. On the PC, that cogging, which I can see right here, it's going on, but, you know, somehow it feels lighter. And I wonder if the gearbox is loosening up, or does it have to do with the force feedback? And I'm just not feeling it as much as I did early. No, it's still there. I didn't feel it as much, and I believe that vibration motor is the reason why. It's such a subtle feeling that I never really feel it while fully driving, even on the PC side. But I didn't feel it at all here today. The wheel is very smooth, very quick, very smooth to turn. This is frictionless like this, but you saw when we cranked it up, the force feedback was still rather strong. Those are things I like. When you talk about aliens and their 
wheels that they like. A lot of aliens back in the day used a DFGT uh, because it was so quick to turn compared to other wheels with more damping and friction built into them. And for a lot of people, that super quick twitchy reaction is very important to really nailing moments in racing. This wheel is going to achieve that goal for sure. And at the same time, bring on stronger level power for enjoyment. That's a whole other topic. We talk about shifters. What level of force feedback? You know, the, the rumor around the alien world is that most of those guys turn their force feedback to almost nothing. Um, very, very little compared to what most of us do. I run a Bodner wheel a lot of times. and I turn it to the point where I'm pouring in sweat just from managing my wheel. And I do that for realism, but it comes at a price and a cost of lap times as well. Legendary is right, Smooth. The red Momo. The red Momo. I had a closet full of broken red Momos. Um, I didn't hear the noise, so right there we're hearing a little bit. I didn't hear it. I like the stiffness of the rim. I did like this wheel rim. However, I didn't like that it... All this, you know, I. it's $800. That's very steep. It was built to go with this game. Why isn't this green button doing anything? So why would I build so many features into my $800 wheel to not even have them all work in the game? Uh, maybe there's something we haven't found yet, so maybe I'm wrong and I'll eat those words. This is initial thoughts, not my full review. But I would have liked to have seen full functionality out of everything in the wheel or why bother when it cost me $200 extra for this logo. Um, so that's something that I don't like. But I do like being able to change the traction control ABS, or not ABS, but the uh, uh, brake balance on the fly. I like the little joysticks. I could see uh, when I go to the PC that this would be very nice on, on games that have so many different things. I mean, you think of iRacing, this could be your spotter volume, your uh, your in-game volume. You know, you could use the buttons for pressing uh, to talk. You can do this through the menus or changing temperatures or, you know, adding uh, uh, pressure to the tires. So I do love, yeah, and I love that about in this is that you can change it. So like this button here was changing through all of the different uh, settings and then I could use just this one knob versus this one and this one seem to be more dedicated um, The ps4 buttons feel exactly like ps4 buttons in a controller. Whoops The butt bumper buttons are nice. I mean, there's so many buttons that is awesome. I Like the vibration motor. It's a nice add-on. I don't know if yet I would pay $200 for the difference I really loved the TSXW. Now that's Xbox One compatible. Um, this is the PS4 version, but the TSPC is not PS4, which means it's sort of a T300 or this, and that's a pretty big difference. I'm sorry, sorry about that, Dutchman. I can't help. It's a nervous thing. I'm, believe it or not, I do get nervous doing all this with you guys, trying to keep on talk of what I'm thinking about. But yeah, you're looking at a T300 at 300 bucks, 350, whatever you're going to pay for it. This at 800 and nothing in between if you're looking for that PS4 compatibility. I like the pedals. You can feel the difference in the stiffness and the brake arms, the pedals. So despite the, the, the design of the plastic being very strong, I've never broken any of those. But you can feel the added stiffness for sure. It's a noticeable difference between these and the TSXW uh, uh, pedal set that comes with it. Um, what else can I think about? In I do like the shape. It's a nice slim. I mean, it's a little on the tall side. But it's not that big. It's not a bulky base. It, it's well hidden behind the wheel. I like that. The wheel itself was very comfortable, so I liked the feeling of it in my hand, but I did prefer the XW. The shifters are nice and, and stiff. Somebody said, what's a positive click? Everybody says positive. I watch reviewer after reviewer. They say positive click. When I'm talking about a positive click, I'm talking about getting a sensation of that moment that it clicks. Getting feedback from the button, not from the game, not force feedback. 
feedback to let me know the moment of the shift has happened versus uh, a button or some that are very muted and you just get to the end of the throw, you see it and hear it happen in game, but you don't feel it. That's what I mean by positive click. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a fun nervousness though. It's okay, but I do do the shaking. I'm sorry about that. I don't do it when I drive. It's just when I'm sitting here talking away. Um, I believe this is a 28. Uh, I'd have to double check or grab a tape measure. I have one there. I'm not sure if it has metric on it. <coughs> no, of course it doesn't have metric on it. Wouldn't that be handy? Um, but... We're looking at, this is 11 inches across. Anybody know their metric conversion real quick? I can look it up on my phone, but that is definitely shy of full size or smaller. Um, Typico, I agree. I, I do prefer the TSXW wheel rim, and I would assume that the uh, Rally one is even cooler or better because it, it's one that you could put on any wheel versus the XW's version is proprietary to that wheel as of now. I'll try that, John. I, I appreciate that. I've actually wondered about those kind of things. Um, 11 inches is 28. So I was right. Yeah, I, I guessed it was uh, 280. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm really happy with the wheel. I love this wheel. It is a great feeling wheel. I don't know if I love it more than the XW, but... What I loved about the XW was the Sparco wheel. I liked also, I really did like the red accents and something. You know, here we are back to just an all black base. Um, so I'd like a little more excitement. Um, Sim Racing Garage. No, I actually have not. Know his work, but no, I haven't actually talked to him. Uh, there I go, shaking my legs again. Oh, so the T5, I had heard it does not work, um, but that's good to know. So anyway, I think that's going to do it for today. We did an hour and a half of testing out with this wheel. All of these shows today have been purely, uh, for the fun of it, got back in town, had this wheel, just had to get started with it. I wasn't planning on getting onto the air until tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., we will get back to work with the... Uh, uh, the pit stop and uh, give you tomorrow's sim racing news catch up on the week maybe we'll talk a little bit about SEMA I wish I had more images of what went on at SEMA but I was just uh, it was non-stop for me and I, I couldn't get away from the booth and I had a great time I had about a hundred different people who came new of the show and had a lot of fun doing it we'll talk more about that tomorrow along with catch up what's been going on in sim racing while I've been away and then tomorrow after that stream we'll probably do another session of testing with this and we'll go ahead and get that Sparco rim on here, test it with some PC racing, and then maybe at the end, maybe even go back to some PS4 just to see how things work with that rim on the PS4. Um, that's where we're going to feel the vibration motor, whereas we're not going to have that when we do our PC testing. So anyway, we will do more driving with this. The other thing is I'm somewhere, I have the settings that I got from David Greco on the TS level wheels. I want to use those settings for the, uh, PC. Today we just use the stock settings. Thank you very much, Smooth. I, I really appreciate that very much. Thank you, Todd. Yes, please hit the like. And if you haven't, you know, check out the SimPit website, thesimpit.com. I'm working on it in the background as well, trying to get some static content like wheel settings, um, tips from some of the top drivers, things that you need that aren't necessarily in video format. I'm a little behind on video entries. I'm going to get that updated as well. But I am putting work into the website. I want it to be more than just a video portal. Uh, also, get in there and chime in on the forum. And also, the Facebook page. So, there is a Simpit, Simpit Facebook page. Please uh, like us there and share as well. And help, help us grow the channel. I see people ask for the donations. I'm going to get that up. But right now, the biggest thing you could do is spread the word. And that will... Everything else will take care of itself as we grow the channel. So I hope you've enjoyed the stream. I had a really good time. I'm loving the wheel. 
Got to say, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I get to do this. I get to test this. And I hope you guys get to see, uh, enjoy seeing it with me for the first time, trying it and getting it, it, being able to really help me out. So you guys helped out a lot with your suggestions and tips on what to do and what to try, try with it. So I really appreciate that as well. And we will be, we will be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I hope you'll be there and we'll have more great conversation about sim racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.